Joshua Boatsy comes through the first real scare of his professional career to stop Marco Chalic, I believe it's pronounced, in the seventh round. Now, I did a couple of pre-fight videos on this one, and I questioned the matchmaking here because I thought that having been out the ring for over a year and only being 12 fights in going into this one, it was a little bit of an unnecessary risk to put Boatsy in with someone like Challenge because Challenge I'd watched, well, uh, in between the two videos I made, I'd watched uh, some of his fights. And prior to the first video I made, I'd looked at his amateur record, looked at the fact he'd been in the World Series of Boxing, looked at the fact that he is a naturally bigger guy than Joshua Boatsy. Boatsy's more like a big super middleweight, whereas Challenge is really a guy who has fought a pretty much cruiserweight in the amateurs. He fought uh, Alan Babich a few times and beat him twice. So, and, and he was unbeaten going into this one and had a lot of ambition. So I was really, you know, a little uh, puzzled as to why Eddie Hearn would pick an opponent that's this uh, dangerous for Joshua Boatsy. And there was a few people in the comment section of those videos kind of mocking me saying, oh, what are you talking about? Have you been listening to too much of Eddie Hearn's hype? <laughs> well, yeah, who looks foolish now? Okay, I, I hadn't listened to anything Eddie Hearn had said about the fight. I just used my own brain and my own two eyes and my own logical, rational thinking. And I came to the conclusion that this is actually a tough opponent for, jo for Joshua Boatsy, you know? And it nearly went all wrong because... In the early rounds, Chalic was boxing very well. I want to say especially the first four rounds, he was boxing very well. He was catching Joshua Boatsy with a lot of shots. And you could see that the physical size of Chalic was something, you know, it, it was an obstacle that Boatsy hadn't really had to deal with so far as a pro. So the, the physical size of him, not just his height, but the, his body. You could tell his body was big as, bigger than uh, Boatsy's body. And his boxing skills, you know, Chalich was throwing good counters. And of course, he swole up Joshua Boatsy's eye in one of those early rounds. It was the second or the third round. And Boatsy's body language, look, he's never been in that situation before as a pro. So his body language, he looked a little perturbed at points there in that fight. He looked like he was maybe a little, uh, I don't want to say a deer in the headlights, but he definitely looked like he was discouraged a little bit, at least momentarily, when he got that, uh, you know, damage to the eye. So it there must have been some very, very anxious moments for Eddie Hearn, who would have been watching back at home. Very, very anxious moments. And he would have really looked bad if Joshua Boatsy uh, would have ended up losing this fight. But the way it turned out, Boatsy bit down on his gum shield he got stuck in, he put the pressure on Kalic and really and truly, I think that I, I was watching the DAZN broadcast of this fight and one of the commentators, was it Alex Arthur? I'm not sure if Alex Arthur was the guy commentating. It sounded like it could have been Alex Arthur. It was a, a Scottish guy alongside Nick Hallin and he was saying that he thinks Boatsy should be more aggressive and put Kalic on the back foot and not stand in the middle of the ring and box with, box with him so much. And that proved to be correct because when he was standing in the middle of the ring and boxing with Kalich, uh, Chalich, Kalich, excuse me, Chalich was having a lot of success and giving Boatsy a lot of problems. He, he was good at messing with the range. He was good at counter punching. He'd wait for Boatsy to throw a shot, then he'd let off three, four shots. So he was real, real good with that kind of stuff. Nice, smart boxing from Chalich, giving Boatsy plenty to think about and plenty of issues. And look, not to say he was completely outboxing. Boatsy and it was not competitive at all for the first four rounds. No, it was back and forth and many of those rounds you could have given him either way. But finally around the fifth or the sixth round, Boatsy launched a real serious attack. And I think it was against, yeah, it was, it was against the run of play. Chalice was having a good round and then Boatsy stuck it on him uh, towards the end of one of the rounds. And that was the turning point really, because he did some damage there, which I'll talk about in just a a second. Then he went into the sixth and into the seventh. 
And that's where Boise finally got through. And uh, in fact, okay, he was down once in the seventh. Was he down in one of the previous rounds as well? I can't remember. But yeah, he put him down in the seventh. The first, well, the, the only knockdown, Chalich was under serious pressure. He was taking big shots. And I don't think it was a, a punch that directly put him down. There was a, a bunch of punches. And then he kind of slumped to the canvas under the weight of Boise's body. <clears throat> but yeah, he definitely needed a respite. He got up. Boatsy went for him again. And remember, at this point, Boatsy had been looking a little drained in the fight. I'm not talking about weight drained. I'm just talking about mentally drained from the fact that he'd been hit in the eye. He was getting out boxed in spots. It was a tough fight for him. And in, in that seventh round, he was empty in the tank. Now, I've seen fights like that where a guy is absolutely empty in the tank and he's in there with a very tricky opponent and he's maybe got a, a, a cut or a swollen eye. And he doesn't manage to get the guy out of there. And then a couple rounds later, he's in trouble himself. So when Kalich got up, it wasn't a particularly devastating knockdown. Don't get it twisted. He was buzzed and he'd been hit with some good shots. But he, it's not like he was stretched out on the canvas. He went down in a knee. So he got up. Boatsy went for him. Pinned him on the ropes. There wasn't really that many heavy follow-up shots that landed. And then... To me, what seemed like a very strange move at the time, Chalich's corner actually pulled him out of the fight. They held up the white towel as if to indicate to the ref, enough is enough. And Chalich didn't complain, but my instant reaction is that it was a very strange stoppage by his corner. Because remember, this is not a journeyman. This is not an old guy. This is Marco Chalich who was unbeaten himself going into this fight, who clearly had a, a lot of ambition and clearly came to win. So for him to just go out like that in his corners and say, no, no, that's, that's enough. When he'd only taken a knee once, and again, he was in there with a guy who was absolutely flat out. Boatsy was throwing everything at him. If he'd managed to survive there, Boatsy could have run out of gas potentially. You know, that's what I was thinking at the time. Boatsy could have run out of gas and he's got that swollen eye, you know? So for them to pull him out at that point, I was like, what What was that stoppage all about? Very strange. You know, you got a young, ambitious fighter and he's in a competitive fight and he's swollen the guy's eye up and the guy might punch himself out if he can get through this onslaught. It's like, what are you doing? But after the fight, according to Boatsy in the post-fight interview, Chalich told him that he'd suffered a broken jaw. And if that's true and that was the case, then that actually explains that stoppage. Because it, it, to me, it seemed very strange at the time. But if he'd suffered a broken jaw in, let's say, the six or one of the prior rounds and told his corner about it, then obviously, in a situation like that, the corner are definitely going to think about throwing in the towel. Because if you've suffered a broken jaw, your corner know, and you're still getting, and you're in trouble, and you're getting hit with big shots in those little 10 ounce gloves, I mean, you don't want to suffer some kind of horror injury. <laughs> you know, that they wouldn't be able to show on television because it's so gruesome. So yeah, if that was the case, then perhaps the, the corner did do the right thing and it explains why it was uh, at first glance such a curious stoppage. But yeah, Boatsy onwards and upwards. I think, look, I, I was a little concerned by the matchmaking here because I, I did think it was a potential banana skin for Joshua Boatsy. But he did win and he will learn a lot from this. So in retrospect, I, I'm still not going to say that it was the right match for him necessarily because he, they could have taken a fight before this and then put him in with challenge. But he'll gain from this. That's the point I, I want to make here. He, he definitely will gain from this experience and he'll go back to the gym and he'll work on things that he needs to work on. You know, everybody's been out the ring. Well, most fighters have been out the ring for a long time. So I'm sure ring Russ would have played a part, which is, again, part of the reason why I was a little concerned about him taking this fight at this time. But as I say, Challenge himself had been out the ring a long time too. But yeah, uh, he will definitely learn a lot from it. One of the commentators was saying that they would not necessarily pick Anthony Yard to beat Boatsy, but they thought that Yard would give Boatsy all types of problems based on that performance. Well, to be fair, I would say that 
Marco Chalic is better than anybody Anthony Yard has beaten. I, I look at Anthony Yard's record and I don't see anyone on there that's as good as Marco Chalic, who he's beaten. Obviously, he fought Kovalev, but he lost to Kovalev. In terms of the win column, I don't see anyone on there as good as Chalic. So let's see Anthony Yard in with Chalic. If they're not going to have Boatsy Yard in their next fights, and if Boatsy doesn't have anything better lined up, let's see Boatsy against, uh, excuse me, let's see Anthony Yard against uh, Chalic, because that would help build the Joshua Boatsy Anthony Yard fight, right? If Anthony Yard can do a better job. So let's see that. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about Joshua Boatsy's performance. Is it what you were expecting? Were you one of these people who thought it was going to be a knockover job? The people that were mocking me before the fight for saying that actually this looks like a tough assignment for Boatsy. Uh, <laughs> which camp were you in? And I'm, I'm going to say it like it is. Those people are casuals. The people who are laughing at me saying it's going to be a knockover job for Boatsy, you guys are casuals. And it's okay. Every, you know, every boxing fan at some stage started off as a casual. So I'm not one of these people that gets all snobby about casuals, but one of the things that you casuals have to understand is that just because you haven't heard of a guy before, it doesn't mean he can't fight. And you shouldn't just straight away jump believing these, these narratives people put out there that like Eddie Hearn protects all his fighters and Eddie Hearn's just bringing in knockover jobs for all his fighters. Well, actually Eddie Hearn has suffered many losses of, you know, many of his prospects and even champions have suffered losses. When Andy Ruiz was picked as a replacement opponent for Anthony Joshua, I was one of the few people saying that's a, a dangerous fight for AJ. Videos are still up on my channel. Whereas the majority of the casuals, oh, this is terrible. What a disgrace is what they were saying. <laughs> so, and they were saying that because partly Andy Ruiz's physical appearance, but also because they don't do their due diligence and because they hadn't heard of Andy Ruiz, they automatically assume he's rubbish. As far as in the mind of most casuals, if I if they haven't heard of somebody before, he can't be any good. Because if he was good, they would have heard of him. <laughs> it's the very uh, simple casual logic. But yeah, I was exonerated on this fight. Uh, Marco Chalic came to win. Gave Joshua Boatsy plenty of problems, but Boatsy in the end did prove his quality and his extra um, ability. And he managed to pull it out of the bag in tough circumstances. And he goes on to bigger and better things. As I say, let's see what happens next, you know, who he gets matched with. I'd like the Anthony Yard fight, to be honest. I think there'll be a real interesting matchup. You know, one of the things that people, because I'm sure there are going to be some people now that say, Anthony Yard beats Boatsy based upon that performance. And one of the things that people need to understand is that Joshua Boatsy is taller than Anthony Yard. Anthony Yard's about 5'11", 6 feet tall, somewhere around there. Joshua Boatsy's 6'2". So there is a, a height and I'm not sure about reach, but there's definitely a height dynamic going on there where Joshua Boatsy is the taller guy. Joshua Boatsy obviously had the much lengthier amateur background. And on top of that, as much as Joshua Boatsy is a consummate pro, and I like his new nickname, by the way, people are calling him Just Business, <laughs> right? JB, Joshua Boatsy, but also Just Business. It, it, it suits him because that's how he comes across, like he's just he's just about business. So yeah, Joshua Boatsy, as much as he's all about business and he's a consummate pro, people were acting like the Marco Challenge fight was going to be a walkover job for him. And it doesn't matter how professional you are, if that's what the fans are saying, then in, in, in a lot of cases, that's going to get to you on some level. And you're going to start to believe that actually maybe it will be an easy fight. Whereas going into an Anthony Yard fight, he's going to be much more switched on. Uh, I, would have, I would imagine there's a lot more at stake. It's uh, East London versus South London and all those domestic rivalry dynamics and what have you. So I think we would see a better version of Joshua Boatsy if he was to fight Anthony Yard anytime soon. So uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think about it. Joshua Boatsy's performance, that is, who you'd like to see him in with next and how you think he'd do 
against Anthony Yard. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.